how many of you guys grew up in the early 2000s or in the late 90s, but if you did, you might remember there was a period of time where a lot of different game companies were creating virtual pets and a lot of different companies in the toy space or even in the tech space were creating robot dogs. It was like we were in this futurism kind of moment where we were getting into the idea of virtual pets or AI type of characters in a game that could be raised like pets. Like we had Tamagotchis and all that kind of stuff, Furbies. And then Sony launched something called the Ibo, which was a robot dog that was supposed to be an artificial intelligence robot dog. I don't know what it was really, but I had to have one. So I loved it so much. I don't know what happened to it. I can't find it anywhere. So one day I decided to try to create it in 3D. And so then I thought maybe I can bring this into Lens Studio and try to animate it and just revive that nostalgia of this robot dog that I had back in the day. So I animated it using bones, I textured it using UV mapping, and then I brought it into Lens Studio using the animated object template. And so in this workshop, I'm gonna show you guys how to use the animated object template and bring in your own characters that have animations and play them in Lens Studio so you could place them wherever you want and revisit nostalgia with characters like the Furby or the Ibo or whatever you'd like to create. I'm going to go through the animated object template and how to customize the animation and how the template works and how to import your own animated objects. So first I'll go through what we see here. So on the left in the objects panel we have our lighting, our camera, and our two animated objects which are actually tracked to this a plane so that they stay on the plane and so that way you can move them to the different part of your ground wherever you are, whether it's in here or it's on the phone when you're trying it out. So each object also has a highlight um, effect so that when you click on it, it's shown which object you're moving by highlighting the edges, the material settings, and each one has a tap feature. So when you tap it, another cute animation shows up. So let's try that one, which is really cute. They also have a shadow, so each object has a shadow mode. So the way you can activate these shadows is by setting each of these objects as a caster, and then the ground is set to receiver already. Also, you can see here the shadow settings in the lighting mode. So when you go to your light source, which is the directional light, not the environment light, um, you can control the shadow density and the blur radius. So now I'm gonna show you how, to, um, how this works animation-wise, and then how to add in your own animated objects. So over here in this red panda setting, for example, you can see there are two different animations, an idle mode and an action mode. And so over here, there is a script to edit. And in this script, you could have you have the, the action mode as the tap, and then the idle mode as the idle, and it's set to loop. So that's why it continues to loop. And then when you tap it, it goes to this little animation just one time. It also has a um, change material on focus, which is the rim color that you're seeing here, where it lights up when you select it and then it has a fade in and out at uh, 0.2 fade speed. So now I'm gonna show you how to import your own objects here so you could do exactly this, but with your own objects, first using the ones in the asset library. So clicking on the asset library, you can go into 3D and find many cute objects to test this out with. So I'm just gonna select this reindeer. It might take a moment to load, so bear with me. So now that the reindeer has loaded, I'm gonna put it in this one, and I'm just going to delete these for now. So I'm going to delete the elephant so that they don't show up anymore, and the panda. And now I'm just going to take this reindeer and put it here. Okay, so now the reindeer is here, and I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger so we could see it a little bit clearer. Just moving it there. So now you can see that there's nothing happens when you tap it. But we want to have the same tap settings for it to have a different tap state. And you can see there's multiple animations here as well. So as long as you're selecting the object here, it's title one, you could see that it has different settings. And this is already set up for, I guess the materials have been set up inside Snapchat, so it already was set to caster. So we don't have to set this shadow up. Um, it's already preset. So you can see it's already casting a shadow. And you could check that by clicking on the object itself. And you could see that right here on each of these objects, these objects are different parts of the reindeer. It's all set to caster mode. And if you turn this off, it'll stop casting. So now going back to the animation, we're going to click on this P for this object. And then going here, I'm going to go and add a component and type in script. So now I'm going to select the animation uh, controller. And so now in an animation controller, I'm going to click the interaction to listen. Let's do the world object elephant. Then we're going to click the animation mixer and select the reindeer. And now I'm just going to move it back and I'm going to select the animations that we want to set for the tap and for the idle state. So we're going to do idle for the idle state. 
And so now you could see it has this looping idle state. And now we could set the animation for uh, the tap to the tap one. And we don't want it to loop, but yes, we'll just do it like that. And so just all you have to do is type in the names from up here exactly how you see them there. Because this is linked up to a script, so it has to be exact. No spaces, no, some, no typos, nothing like that. You just have to find the exact name of what it is up here. And you could change these names in this area here. So by clicking on it now, the tap uh, effect takes place and then it goes right back to the idle mode. And so now I can switch to arrival and you could, by tapping it, create this cute jump effect. So there's different animations already here that you could play with. You could try these out, like make the idle state a walk. So it's walking and then it jumps and then it goes back to walking again, or you could just leave it as it was. So all the objects that they have set up with animations have multiple cute animations like this for you to play around with. And if you wanted to, you could add that fade animation as well so that when you tap on it, it or select it, it gives it that outline. But for now, we're just gonna skip that and I'm just gonna import my own object into this to show you how to create your objects in Blender and then how to bring them in. So go into Blender, I'm gonna show you an object that I made. This is an Ibo, it's a robot dog that um, I built. And this one has a couple of animations set up like this one where it turns its head kind of cute. And then there's a couple of other ones here. So I've just made a couple of different animations for this character. Some of them don't work because I was just troubleshooting. Um, let's see which ones do. So this one is like a walk and so on. There's a couple of them here. So I've saved it and now I'm gonna import it into Lens Studio object. And I could see I pasted it or placed it underneath the elephant controller right here. I also resized it to three because I imported it a little bit small. And you could see my animations here under this area here where I have like nothing and I have a couple of different ones like this one that makes it walk. And then I have this one that makes its head turn and this one that makes its head shake. And so the head turn and the head shake are kind of close to each other. Oops. <laughs> they just can't be playing at the same time. And then we have our walk. All right, so I'm just gonna turn those off for now. Um, so what we have here is um, these, you could see the different settings and the different names of each of these that I've given it. You can modify your names. Like in here, I had like a very long name, so I modified it to just walk, and this one is just nothing. So if I wanna set up my animation script, I just have to type in the word script, and then I could click add script and then animation controller. Then with animation controller, I just have to add those different settings again. I have the elephant one here and then the animation mixer. So now I'm just gonna set these different idle modes. Um, we're gonna do head shake. I just have to turn that back on. So I'm just gonna edit that one because it's going a little bit fast. So I'm gonna set the speed to like point, point 0.3. So now it does like this little robotic head shake thing. And so now I have to set a tap animation. So I'm gonna try turn, let's see that one. I think it's the same. Let's try walk. So now you see it's walking when I tap it and it should just go through one time and then go back. Now let's just check on our shadows. Make sure that I have it placed properly. So I have to add a shadow to all these objects by selecting them all and then clicking here where it says shadow mode and set it to caster. So now you can see my objects is a little high off the ground. So what I'm gonna have to do is just bring it down a little bit. So by clicking up here, I'm gonna just pull the preview out there. Going to scene, I'm just gonna click on hit it and then I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit lower. Make sure it doesn't disappear into the ground when you click on it. Oop, something's wrong with my animation. <laughs> but it does look rather cute. So I'm gonna go up here and change these things around a little bit. And I think what I may have to do is turn off some of these ones that I'm not using. That way they don't get scrambled up. So for now it has these two animations set and 
that's just to show you just how easy it is to set this up using this template because this is already here, this animation controller, and you could just plug in your items here, change their names, and then pop them in here and your animation controller works. And now your object is animated. So now I'm just gonna set my textures. So I'm gonna make all of these, um, the, each of the, the eyes, let's see, where's my right eye, left eye? And then the nose, I'm gonna give a material. I've already set up a PBR. Then for the point on the head, I got this rainbow texture from the asset library. I'm just gonna put that there. And then for the entire body, I'm gonna give this other texture that I got or material from the, uh, the asset library, which is the default mesh asset. And you could find many different assets, uh, materials in this asset library by going to materials. There's all kinds of post effects as well that could be added as materials. And they have so many different options. Like if you wanted to do glass or Let's try some of these out just for fun. Or gold. Or even, let's see, a hologram. So I'm just gonna X out of that. And so now if I was to switch this material to one of those, let's see how it defaults. So the gold looks really cool. Because I've definitely seen something like that before. Then we have hologram, which also looks really cool, but it's animated, so it's kind of like looking wild. And then the glass, let's try that. This usually needs to be adjusted, but that looks very cool. So maybe I'll leave it as glass, and then I'm going to add the ears as well. Or you could make the ears a totally different material. Like all of these could be gold, and now it looks almost like a special cool toy. So that's how you use this template and um, that's how you import your own objects and I hope this was helpful. Um, it's really fun. It's fun to create world objects um, and there's so many things you can do in this program. It's endless so I'll definitely jump into more complex animations in the future but I just wanted to go through this template and how you set up a tap effect.